Welcome to my lecture online. In the previous playlist, we showed you all the various types of factoring techniques you may need to know in order to factor any sort of polynomial you might come across. But then we did some examples, but each example was according to a specific technique we had just learned. What happens when you have a random polynomial and you don't know what technique you need to use to factor that one? Well, that's what this playlist is for. A set of examples where you don't know ahead of time what technique we may want to use on that. And so there's a certain type of technique, a certain type of procedure you want to follow to best your chance of doing it right, get the right answer. So the basic concept is that first you want to factor out any common factors. Then with whatever you have left, you're trying to categorize, categorize what polynomial you're dealing with. And then of course you want to apply the correct technique to factor it. So the first thing you want to do is when you have something like this to see if you can factor out any common factors. Since every one of the numerical coefficients is even, we can see that we can factor out the number two. Then with what's left, you then want to see what type of polynomial you have. So in this case, when we have x squared plus 12x plus 36, notice that the first term is a square, x squared, and the last term is a square, 36 squared, and that should conjure up, oh, I know how to factor something like that. So in this case, when you factor this, you end up with the quantity x plus 6 times x plus 6, or the quantity x plus 6 squared. Quickly checking, x times 6 is 6x, 6 times x is 6x, add it together, you get 12x, you get the middle term, Yes, we did it correctly. So that's the goal, is to once you factor out a common factor, determine what you may be dealing with, and then what technique you're going to need to solve that, or to factor that. Here, this may be the difference of squares, and sure enough, 16 is 4 squared, so this you should recognize as the difference of squares, which again has a specific technique. And then here, notice that you have four terms, but you can group them together, and if you group them together, then each group you can factor out, in this case, a 7, and in this case you can factor out a b, and then you recognize that you have an x cubed minus y squared and an x cubed minus y squared left, and then you can factor that out. So again, you recognize, oh, that must be done by the technique of grouping, and so that's how we go proceed on how to solve or how to factor various types of polynomials. Here is the last example. Again, can you factor out a common factor? 3, 12, 9. Yes, we can factor out a 3. So let's do that first. So we end up with 3 times x squared plus 4x plus 3. Then we notice that the first and last term are not squares. The first term is, but not the last term. And then you say, well, maybe we can go ahead and factor it like this. We're going to put 2 sets of parentheses. The first term is x squared, that means we need an x and an x. Everything is positive, which means we need plus and plus. And now we're looking for two numbers. When I multiply, you get 3. When I add, I get 4. Well, 1 and 3. When you multiply, you get 3. When you add, you get 4. So the solution is 1 and 3. So that's how you then proceed once you factor out anything that's common. We sometimes make the job harder for us by not first factoring something out and then by not looking for the right type of polynomial, the kind of polynomial we're dealing with. So now we're going to go ahead and show you a number of other examples of how to apply this technique to make the job a lot easier. And that is how it's done.